This is page 81. I was weak. I was full of such excuses and I would so end up binging on whatever was around me. It was like a religion. I went there to find comfort, deliver my body over to it, and listen to its verses without ever fully understanding them. I went there because it was what I'd been doing for a while now, and it was just easy to blindly follow its teachings and demands, deliver me. So I did as so many others had done before me. I got down onto my knees and prayed for something I could not seem to find. How dare I go outside its holy doors? Forgive me. This religion I praise was more of a twisted cult. It was running me straight into the ground because I was never going to be good enough for it. You see it everywhere you go. Lose 15 pounds in two weeks. Get a flat tummy in less than a month. This generation is fixated on our bodies, on our materials, and on our ungrateful lifestyles that we don't even embrace. We just go through the motions. We live day to day looking at magazines, books, and hearing TV programs and the news talk about how so-and-so gained weight, how you can lose weight with this new diet pill, that eating complex carbs only is the way to go, that this new product will get rid of your cellulite. It's brainwashing us to believe we're never good enough. We live in such bullshit that it's not really as much of a surprise that about 24 million people suffer from an eating disorder. You also hear it at the gym, restaurants, at your friend's house, from your parents, in your grocery store, at church. Oh, I really shouldn't go out to eat. I'm trying to lose weight. I shouldn't have breakfast because I ate so much last night. It can't be a size two if I eat a piece of that cake. Then there's the best one. I feel fat today, so I'm going to fast. It's just floating around us like an obnoxious cigarette that is lit in a smoke-free zone. We are all getting secondhand smoke here, whether we realize it or not. It is brainwashing us to believe that if we starve ourselves, if we skip meals, if we bash on our bodies, that we are normal. We are normal for doing these things. It is popular. It is what the world talks about constantly. So go ahead, skip your breakfast, eat no gluten, have no carbs after six in the afternoon, and get your plastic surgery to get rid of your imperfection. That shit is normal. Our surroundings and our brains tell us so. It's okay, we're all fucked up. The title of the book is All Things Ella, and basically it's, it's my story of how I got to where I am today. It covers my entire backstory, like the back surgery I had, and then growing up, going through the horse racing, and then going through um, my realization that I had anorexia, and then I was bulimic. Oh man, I remember uh, writing that, and then when I got home, I rewrote it onto the computer, and I cried the whole time, like that really disgusting sob, like you like can't control yourself. And as um, soon as I finished typing it, I looked at it for a minute, and I was, you, you kind of like feel that moment, um, you're about to let go of something, and uh, you don't know if you want to let go, because in a way, bulimia completed me, it was the only way I knew how to compete or live, and uh, I was afraid of what I'd be like without it. And people would look at me and see not only, oh, you know, Ella with her back, oh, Ella now with her eating. So it was like a weird combination of, I don't know if I want to be known for that, but also I'm tired of hiding it. So I went ahead and went with my gut and posted it. And I have never cried so much. I cried for like two weeks straight after I posted it in March. And I remember the amount of support I got was just just tremendous. I, I, I really wish I could just go hug everyone. It was amazing. But I also got a lot of ignorance. Um, I got a lot of people who who looked at me and told me they didn't get it and um, that I, you know, I lost a lot of friends. I lost a lot of even supporters who said that, um, you know, I never looked like an athlete and that's not what athletes do. So some of it was pretty hard. But you also, when you go through times like that, you really realize people's true color and your own true color. So I stayed true to myself and I realized this is good. I, why should I hide it? Why should I be ashamed? It's okay. And uh, once I was able to swallow that, you know, moving on um, from that moment was, uh, was really incredible. You know, it was hard to really look at the, everyone and say, hey, you know, I'm sick. <laughs> and, um, and this is the happiest and healthiest I've been in about four, five years. Uh, and it feels really good. <laughs> Real good. <laughs> You're gonna make me like cry. <laughs>